Okay, today we're going to get introdu introduced actually to basic diode circuits. And when you look at a diode, what you have is a positive and negative crystals next to each other, and that's what a diode is. This is what we use for a symbol for a diode there, so you always see that picture. Now, when you take a circuit like this and you connect it, that's known as forward bias. And the reason is forward bias because the plus voltage is attached to the plus end of that diode where the negative is attached to the negative. So this diode actually is connected in forward mode or forward bias. Why you need to know that? Because if you remember from the previous video, this is how the diode works. This is actually for silicon diode. Silicon diode, if you get 0.7 volts here or larger, is going to force the current to go through it. So once that voltage exceeds 0.7 across this diode, current will start to flow through it. Up to that, there's really not much current going through it. Maybe I should make this even like this. So up till you hit 0.7 volts, there's no current going through it. Once that point 0.7, once you reach that, current will start to flow. What happens if that voltage increases? That voltage is still point 0.7, but the current now is getting larger and larger through it. This is in forward bias. When you're in reverse bias, if you reverse that voltage source here, this actually, there's no current going through it. It's zero current. Current's not going to go this way through that diode. Unless you reach a breakdown voltage, which is, we said, roughly about 50 volts. Then you're going to destroy that diode, and current now will go in that direction. Now, we make an assumption these diodes are perfect diodes or ideal diodes. We'll talk about that in the next video. But this voltage is called the knee voltage. So for silicon, the knee voltage is 0.7. Again, that's for silicon. For germanium, that's SI. For germanium, GI, the knee voltage is actually... 0.3 volts. So it doesn't take much for the current to flow through it. Now what about the power? And if you, if you look at the schematic for these actually diodes, if you grab one look at the schematic, they'll give you the maximum current that will go through it and will give you what the breakdown voltage. So you have to look at the schematic to see what these numbers are. On the schematic you're also going to see what is the maximum power these actually diodes can supply or observe there. So the power, maximum power, we know from circuits, power is voltage times current. So if you look at the schematic and it says the maximum power for this diode, if it says the maximum equals 5 watts, and your voltage now, Vmax, let's say the maximum is 2 volts, and the maximum current going through that diode happens to be 1.5 volts, then from these two you can calculate the power, which is Vmax times I sub max. And that's 2 times 1.5, and that will give me 3 watts, and that's within range because the maximum can handle is 5 watts, so you're okay, you're not going to kill that diode. But if you increase that number, if the voltage goes to 5, this is shot now. Because the value across that will be actually more than 5 watts there. So the question becomes, how do you know when you have a circuit, especially a bigger circuit, if that circuit is in forward bias or is it in reverse bias? So let's take this circuit. Let's say I have 10 volts here. Shannon, give me a number for this resistor. Six. Six. And give me another number for this resistor. Four. Four. And now we have a diode here. And Shannon, one more res value here. Um, Twelve. Twelve ohms. Now, is this diode going to be in the forward mode or forward bias? So the, really the only way to figure that out, you need to know, like if the circuit looked like this, you can tell this is the plus attached to the plus, that's forward bias. So what you have to do is thevenize the circuit, cut it right there, 
and replace the circuit with V Thevenin, the equivalent value. So in case you forgot, two or three videos ago, we Thevenized something like this. There's the 10 volts. So what I need to find is actually what is V Thevenin here? Because the Thevenin equivalent, we're gonna take this circuit, replace it with the voltage source of V Thevenin in series with the resistor called R Thevenin. And if this value is positive, now when you attach it here, you're gonna be in the forward bias mode. So how do we find V Thevenin? For this circuit, V Thevenin is V open circuit. So here we go, let's look at our circuit. And if you remember, we can use voltage division here. So this is my V Thevenin right here. Equals 10 times four divided by the sum of them voltage division, which gives me four volts. And to find R Thevenin for this circuit, we need to short the source, the voltage source. How do you short the voltage source? You make it a short, well, I gave you short, make it a short circuit. So if you short circuit that voltage source, this way you have and short circuit this. And looking back this way, what is R Thevenin? So if you look at that, you can see there are two resistors in parallel. This is four, and this is six, and this is R Thevenin. And R Thevenin is equal to the product over the sum. 4 plus 6 is 24 divided by 10, which is equal to 2.4. So now we can take this ugly circuit that you see here and replace it with a voltage source of a value of V7, which is 4 volts, in series with a 2.4 ohm resistor. And here's my diode now, and there's my load resistor the 12. Since the plus C is attached to this end, this is in forward bias mode. Forward bias mode. And again, the key to that anytime is find the equivalent. And once you find the equivalent or R7 equivalent, you can tell if that's actually forward bias or reverse bias mode there. Okay.